Beloved, let us pray. Before we talk to men and women about God, it's always appropriate first to talk to God about men and women. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come now before your throne of grace, asking and requesting that you open our eyes that we might see what you want us to see. Open our ears so we'll hear what you want us to hear. Open our minds that we might learn what you want us to learn. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength, and you sure enough are our redeemer. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Let us all say together, amen, amen, and praise God. Greetings and salutations to my church family, to my Facebook family, to my YouTube family. Welcome to another edition of Moments with the Master. Moments with the Master was uniquely designed with you in mind to come to you each and every Monday to begin your week and each and every Friday to end your week to help you, to encourage you, even to admonish you, to take time out of your busy schedules, to spend some time with the master. You must take the time to spend some time, some quality time with the master. In order to fulfill that, in order to do that, you must take the time to look at the word, learn from the word, lean on the word, and do all you can to live by the word. Beloved, this morning, I want to share with you that the greatest gift ever given to this sin-sick world will not be the COVID-19 vaccine, although that will be a great gift. It will never, it will never ever compare with the greatest gift ever given to this sin sick world. I'll say that again. Although the COVID-19 vaccine is a great gift, it's not the greatest gift given to this sin-sick world. Matter of fact, it pales in comparison to the greatest gift ever given to this sin-sick world. Because when the greatest gift ever given was given, it had nothing to do with the gifting of cash. It had nothing to do with the gifting of cars. It had nothing to do with the gifting of creature comforts. The greatest gift ever given to this sin sick world was not bought at Macy's on the East Coast. It wasn't even bought from Dillard's on the West Coast. It wasn't even bought from Walmart, Middle America's favorite store. This gift was not bought at some upscale department store. Matter of fact, no cash was even exchanged when the greatest gift ever given was given to this sin-sick world. It was wrapped. I can tell you that this, the greatest gift known to mortal man was wrapped, but it was not traditionally wrapped with bows and in boxes. The Bible is clear. The Bible says that the greatest gift known to the sin sick world was wrapped in swaddling clothes. That word swaddling is the Hebrew word for our English words, rags. The greatest gift ever known to mankind was wrapped in rags. 
Imagine that. A gift, the greatest gift given to this sin-sick world was wrapped in rags. The greatest gift ever given to this sin-sick world was not a product. The greatest gift known to this sin-sick world was a person. It was wrapped up in a person, a personality that we've come to know as Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift ever given to this sin-sick world, to this sin-sick world. In a real sense, Jesus is the gift that just keeps on giving. He's the gift that keeps on giving. And in an order uh, for God to provide a cure for this sin-cursed world, Jesus had to do two things. Number one, he had to first be born. Then he had to die. Then he had to be buried. Did you hear what I said? To provide the greatest gift ever known to a sin-sick world, Jesus had to be born, he had to die, and he had to be buried. Someone may ask the intelligent question, why did Jesus have to be born in the first place? Why did Jesus have to die in the second place? And why did Jesus have to be buried in the third but last place? Well, in order to appreciate the birth, in order to appreciate the death, in order to appreciate the burial of Jesus Christ and his glorious resurrection, we have to go back to basics. We have to go to back to basics telling the grand old story of Jesus' birth, Jesus' death, and Jesus' glorious resurrection. But when we go back to basics, beloved, we have to understand and appreciate that nobody in this world is perfect. That's why God sent Jesus, because no one in this world is perfect. That's why Jesus had to come. Nobody was coming up to the standard that God has set for this sin-sick world. Matter of fact, I've never met a perfect person. Matter of fact, I don't even know a perfect person. I don't, you don't, we don't know of anyone that is perfect, that is picture perfect in the eyesight of God. Matter of fact, we can't even meet our own expectations, let's know the blessed standard of a perfect God. Therefore, Jesus was born. Jesus had to die. Jesus had to be buried and raised from the dead as a repayment for our imperfection. Jesus, the perfect Savior, died for imperfect sinners. That's the grand old story. That's why Jesus is the greatest gift ever given because he died, he was born, he died, he was buried and gloriously resurrected from the dead to show the power of God and the payment of our sins. Now, why do you say, Rapasta, that cope that that um, the gift of Jesus is greater than the COVID-19 vaccine. Well, look at the numbers. You do the math. There are millions of people across this world, across this nation, that has COVID. Millions of people. I can't fully recall the accurate number at this point, but I do know that I'm accurate when I say that millions 
have caught COVID-19. Millions are in the grip, in the grasp of this devastating disease. However, when you compare COVID-19 to sin, everybody is infected. Everybody is impacted with sin. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, I feel like preaching, y'all. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says with crystal clarity that all have sinned. And there's nothing outside of all, y'all. And listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says all have sinned, not y'all have sinned. It literally says that all are infected, all are impacted with this devastating disease called sin. We are all infected with sin. We are all infected with selfishness. We are all infected by Satan himself. And not only, and another thing, not only will sin impact the world in which we live, it will also infect and impact you in the world to come. That's why sin is more devastating than COVID could ever be. And the greatest gift given to us is Jesus the Christ, who is the cure for this sin-cursed world. I'm so glad that God saw fit to give you, to give me, to give the world, to give humanity the greatest gift that we could ever receive. And that's the person in the person of Jesus the Christ. Realize, accept the fact that all have sinned. I've sinned, you sinned. The world is impacted, the world is infected with this devastating disease called sin. But Jesus is the cure for this sin-cursed world because God saw fit to gift us with the greatest gift ever known to humanity. I'm so glad that God revealed this word to me on last week when I was studying our previous installment that Jesus, according to God's ultimate will, Jesus, according to God's perfect will, Jesus, according to God's intentional will, died fundamentally for three reasons. He died to first rescue us from our sins. He died not only to rescue us from our sins, he died to recover us because of our sins. And he also died that he can re reconnect us to himself and reconnect us with one another in spite of our sins. Don't forget, beloved, Remember to remember that the greatest gift ever given was Jesus the Christ, the matchless Son of God, because through his birth and through his burial, through his glorious resurrection, heaven made a divine exchange. God the Father made a divine exchange because of the birth of Jesus and the burial of Jesus. God was able to make a divine exchange in order for us to make a change. In our daily lives, God had to make a divine exchange. What kind of divine exchange? Look at God when he gave us the greatest gift ever given. He exchanged our guilt for his grace. He exchanged our mess for his mercy. And he exchanged 
our sins for his full salvation, for his free salvation, and the salvation of our sin-sick souls. God made a divine exchange by sending the greatest gift that the world could ever receive. I'm speaking now to those of you who are part of my listening audience. You haven't accepted Jesus as the greatest gift from a loving God. I wish and I pray that you would do it today before it's everlasting and eternally too late. There is a time frame that you have the opportunity to accept the greatest gift ever known to man. Beloved, I see that my time is far spent. It's far better to have God and not need him than to need him and not have him. If you walk with God, my God will walk with you. God bless till we meet again.